When you were watching someone was alive, were you still a kid? All right, so we're at the George Washington house. This is not a house that was just named after George Washington. A lot of people don't realize this, but there's a strong connection between Barbados and the United States. So we're actually gonna get to school on US history. George Washington spent a long period of time here in Barbados before he was the president of the United States. Actually, he was an architect, I believe, and we're gonna get more details and share a little bit uh, about that future. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about that. It's had haphazard opening uh, times right now, but it looks like it's open now. So we're gonna go give it a try, see what we can learn about some US history and the Barbados connection. The George Washington House in Barbados is a historic house where the future first U.S. president, George Washington, is known to have stayed in 1751 and spent about two months. He was 19 years old at the time and traveling with his half-brother Lawrence Washington, who was suffering from tuberculosis. The Washington brothers traveled to the island hoping the tropical climate of Barbados could cure him. This trip would be the only overseas voyage the future president would ever take. In Barbados, George witnessed his first fort, first theatrical performance, and visited his first big city in Bridgetown. George Washington contracted smallpox while he was in Barbados, leaving him immune to the disease and was nursed back to health in the home. Smallpox decimated the American Revolutionary Army, but George was unaffected and was able to organize the first mass inoculation against smallpox for his troops. Everybody in Barbados is Barbados. Historians have said that not only did George Washington sleep in Barbados, he also woke up here. At the time, Bridgetown was one of England's most precious colonial possessions. It was the most populous city and urban area that George Washington had ever experienced, and it was one of the most populous cities in the British Empire. George Washington was able to see a level of economic prosperity and a form of life that he had never experienced having only lived in Virginia. For you history buffs out there, the second floor is worth exploring. It deepens the understanding of the American Barbadian connection. It shows the ties of slavery between Bridgetown and the United States and really explores some of the harsh elements of slavery and the cruelties that took place and what was done in the different nations. It also shows the connections between some Barbadians and even Civil War generals on both sides within the United States. I can keep going, but you'd be much better suited checking out that on, on your own. George Washington learned lots about the British military while he was in Barbados because it was one of the most fortified colonies that they held. That knowledge would ultimately serve him very well in the Revolutionary War. There's even some fascinating tunnels that run under the garrison that you get to explore that were part of their outpost. The garrison is basically where there's a giant horse racing track. It's really close to Pebbles Beach, the Hilton at Needham's Point, and that's where one of the big forts was. After you've completed your tour, make your way down to Pebbles Beach and go grab yourself a Cuz 
sandwich. These fish cutters are amazing. They've been featured on international television shows across the globe. You've seen us here many, many times, but uh, you cannot beat a cuz sandwich. One of those sandwiches runs about 11 Barbados. I'll put the red stuff. We've included some links for you uh, to different sites that can tell you a little bit more about the history of Washington's journey to Barbados. Enjoy your visit and say hello if you see us on island. Thank you.